Hi, I'm Nancy Johnson with Intention to Balance and welcome to Holistic Living where we are showing people all the different natural modalities available to you to live more naturally without side effects or addictions. And today I'm very excited to uh, have a guest that is doing Qigong, which is something I've done in the past and I'm relearning it and she's going to teach you a lot of great things today. So. I want to welcome Rhonda Batisto. Thank you. Rhonda is a master healer and Qigong master, and we'll talk more about that. But I want to just uh, first give you the opportunity if there's anything you'd like to add before we jump in. Oh, I'm just tickled to be here. Thank you. Um, I'm a master healer and master teacher. Uh, I've not been designated a Qigong master, but mastery is something that we build throughout our lives, so I just put that caveat in there. I yeah. love it. So I'm excited to teach people about Qigong and yes. what it is today. And so what originally got you interested in Qigong or how did you start your practice? I had debilitating, chronic, spasming low back pain every day for more than a decade when mm -hmm. I learned about Qigong. And my massage therapist introduced me to it by doing a healing on something that was bothering me in my body and it disappeared. It was amazing. And so I took the very next class. So I've been practicing for 20 years and teaching for 13. And um, it changed my life, it changed my altitude, my attitude, my body. Um, and it changed my career because I was in business when I started learning Qigong and now I'm in the Qigong business, so to speak. Wow, I uh, love and that. The back pain is gone. It's gone. Wow. Healed. And, oh, I want to talk more about that too. And, so, I mean, that's one of the, so Qigong, you know, can you describe it a little bit or how it works? Sure, Einstein said everything is energy and energy cannot be created or destroyed. Um, Master Lin, the creator and founder of Spring Forest Qigong, which is the tradition that I learned in the year 2000, um, says that we have the option to transform energy for the better or the worse. So we always have a choice and we get, to, we get to decide that. So using breath and uh, focus of the mind, movement or posture of the body, and uh, sound, we can raise our vibration and change our, um, our energy vibration from good to better to best at any stage of our lives, at any state of health, at any age, regardless of what the challenges are that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting and so, I mean, any age can pretty much use Qigong and can people actually do it on little ones when they're helping them or do you, is it something you really have to do on your own? So there's internal Qigong which is helping you with your own energy, work with your own energy and then there's external Qigong where you can detect the blockages of energy in others and learn a protocol to heal and release those blockages, so clear those blockages, so that the energy can move in the body in a balanced, powerful, healthy way. Mm. So uh, regarding children, children are very receptive mm. to healing work of all sorts, Qigong being one petal in the flower of natural healing, right? Um, and pretty young children can learn how to do Qigong as well. In simplified terms, they can learn to help themselves and their friends. So is it like with most things, um, do you have to believe it's going to work in order for it to work? <laughs> That's a fabulous question. Um, so you don't have to believe that it will work. All you need to do is do it. So Qigong isn't based on a religion or a specific belief in, belief in a, sp a specific spiritual entity or leader. Mm. Uh, it's, it's about working with the energy. So working with your intention and your vision for being clear and healed and healthy and whole. You just do the movements or the meditations or the chanting or sounds, right, sounding, um, and the vibration in your body changes. And some people are very sensitive to energy, so they really feel something happening when they do it. And other people, they don't feel anything, but the something is still happening because everything is, en is energy and we can manipulate and work with and navigate and change our own and help others to self-heal and change theirs. That's so fun, I know, because we've talked, um, you know, we just met fairly recently yes. and 
immediately connected and and it was it's just been so fun to um, practice Qigong a little bit mm -hmm. again and I got to go over to your house and uh, not house the healing center the studio I, I, mm -hmm. it's kind of like your house in a sense you all <laughs> share it right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in the healing center and that was a beautiful way to kind of be reintroduced to it so you know and I know um, a lot of people are are going through issues in their body and looking for some alternative and does it you know how long does it typically take does it like w can it work in one session with people or does it typically is it something you have to practice for a while yeah absolutely it can work in one session I've you know helped people with um, months long back pain and cleared it up in 10 minutes that's a pretty extreme example but it's a true example um, and depending on how receptive the person is and what they're, I, I don't know a better way to say this, what they're ready for, yeah. it can happen in an instant. I've seen large tumors go into very small, like a fist-sized tumor go into a thumb-sized tumor in three days. That's pretty instantaneous to me, wow. right? Just during one Qigong conference. Um, whether we heal instantly or whether we set the stage for the healing that we're looking for by doing these practices we are raising our vibration we are transforming mm -hmm. energy and so my low back pain didn't resolve in one session or in three classes or in three months or even three years to be honest with you um, but what was changing in me while I was learning and practicing Qigong and learning how to develop a consistent daily practice, which is a real problem for a lot of people, right. can be a real challenge, right? Is that I was getting kinder and calmer and more open. And so when my back spontaneously healed at a conference, like, oh, the pain is gone, miraculously healed, um, it, I, it was there and then it was gone. Um, I knew that it was one step in a process that was continuing, that I wasn't done and could go home, but that there was more practice to, to engage in so that I could open up to my purpose and my calling and a better understanding of how we're all connected to one another yeah. and how we're all connected to the energy that grows the trees and grows our fingernails right. <laughs> and that breathes us. You know, yeah. we're being breathed. So one of the things that happens when you practice Qigong, meditation, yoga, you know, all of these wonderful spiritual practices is that we allow ourselves to open to support and help to the universe, to unconditional love, which can do most of the heavy lifting for us. I didn't force my back to heal. Right. I allowed it to heal. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, because I mean, that's something I've known or learned throughout the years is, is, is our body, you know, our cells hold energy and if I always know that oh I've heard that the back is related to anger you know so sometimes if you're holding something in um, but like you said with practice and letting go um, I just love that so uh, you know I would really love to do a demonstration and you know show people at home how easy that this could be to do fabulous so, let's great. do that let's do that okay so I'm excited for everyone to see how easy Qigong can be to do in your own home. So Rhonda is going to show us how to do some easy Qigong movements. And if you would just kind of narrate as you go, that would be a beautiful thing. Absolutely. So we begin with just a little bit of bouncing to get the energy moving in the body and to get the lymph and the blood moving as well. The bounce is in the knees, the feet are flat on the floor. The hangs, the hangs, the arms hang loose and floppy. <laughs> Relaxing the chest and the neck and the face. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Releasing any tension, just letting it drip off of your fingertips and letting go of anything that happened before this moment. Slowing the bouncing, and coming to stillness, 
do a little bit of tapping and cupping to open up the energy channels very quickly and efficiently. With the tips of the middle fingers, we start just below the eyes at the eye socket ridge nine times. The origin of the eyebrow nine times. The top of the head nine times with a cupped hand. The base of the head nine times. And then C7, and you can rub C7 or you can cup it. That's the bump at the top of the back or bottom of the neck. And then the hands nine times. The inside of the left elbow. Inside of the right elbow. Under the arm. Under the other arm. And I know the microphone is being affected. You tap the tailbone a little bit the hips, and then you can cup the fronts, the backs, and the sides of your knees, but we'll just move right into relaxing into chi stance. The feet are slightly broader than shoulder width apart. The tailbone drifts down, the eyes close, the palms are facing the back behind you. Elbows are relaxed. You draw the chin toward your neck just a little bit. Put the tongue against the roof of the mouth and close the lips and put a gentle smile on your face. Breathing in and out of the nose if you can. You call upon the highest source of unconditional love and healing from your mind, from your heart. You call that master energy. Please, master, help us to heal fully and completely. You can say the password in your mind, I am in the universe. The universe is in my body. The universe and I combine together. Place the right hand in front of the heart, the left hand in front of the navel. The navel in Qigong is called the lower dantian, the space just below and behind the navel. Palms face the body, visualize a column of light from the top of your head to the bottom of your torso, shining and sparkling. This is the forming of yin and yang. If you're waving forward and back at all, you can bend your knees a little bit farther. These movements can be done sitting, standing, or lying down. The moving of yin and yang, the top hand goes away from the body and down. The bottom hand floats up along the body without touching. Top hand goes about to the forehead, the bottom hand goes about to the bladder, and then they switch. The top hand again goes out and down. Smile. Bottom hand floats up. The front and back energy channels are open, open, open. All channels open. Spine is conditioned, healed, and aligned. Organs are healed and nourished and balanced. All blockages gone. You can set an intention for your specific healing. My pain is gone. My arthritis is gone. My kidneys have fabulous energy. My breathing is perfect. The slower you move, the better. Focus on happiness to gain more energy and more benefit in less time. It's like pedaling a bicycle forward. So it's always down in front. Happy, open, and healed. And you set these intentions and think and feel these thoughts and emotions, even if you're having a rough day, maybe especially if you're having a rough day. Happy, happy, happy. Coming to the end of this movement, the hands pause in front of the navel. We'll just do a half a minute of the breathing of the universe. The palms face one another. Shoulders are down and relaxed. Inhaling, you breathe in light and love through every pore of your skin. Exhaling, you release blockages as light, smoke, or vapor. Inhale, elbows go out and guide the movement, hands follow. Palms continue to face one another. Exhale, anything that no longer serves you. Inhaling light and love from every pore of your skin, gathering it in the lower dantian, behind the navel. Exhale, anything you no longer need. Breathing in and out of the nose. 
focus on joy. Joy for any reason, joy for no reason. <laughs> Breathing in gently and quietly. Taking in everything you need. Letting go of anything you no longer need. Even if it's a story or a judgment. In with light and love, healing and grace. Out with judgment, sadness, sickness, tiredness, and pain. Coming to the end of this movement, the hands fold in and face the lower dantian. Women have the right hand closer to the body. Men have the left hand closer to the body. And you just focus on the light, on a light. Imagine, intend, see, or feel the warmth of the light in your lower dantian. Take a deep breath. It gets brighter. Exhale, it gets brighter still. You can relax your stance and rub your hands together. You can rub your face like you're drawing a heart on your face up the bridge of the nose and down the outside of the face. And you can rub your ears from top to bottom. Give them a good tug. You should feel refreshed and rejuvenated and relaxed. Oh, that is a beautiful thing. Yay. I love that. Thank Ooh, you. Fun. Thank you. So that was really fun. Um, I am so enjoying Qigong. And, and when I was doing that, um, I don't, you know, you talked about earlier about the energy that you can feel it the more you get into it. And I could definitely like feel the energy in my hands when we were doing this. Um, and does that, like, is that, some people I suppose feel it right away, you know, I don't know if people they say that are more healers, you know, have more of that energy or if that's not the case. It, um, the, the most important thing is that whether you feel the energy moving in your body and in your hands and between your hands and your body, or whether you don't feel anything, something is still happening. And it's, it's not uncommon when people are doing the moving of yin and yang or the breathing of the universe for them to also have even pain or, or, or uncomfortable emotions or unusual sensations mm. come up in the body and in the emotions. You know, this is holistic healing mind, body, spirit, emotions, all at once. So things can get a little, I want to say, ruffled. Yeah. And that's really just the releasing <clears throat> of blockages. So whether you perceive mm -hmm. what's happening or whether you don't, healing is happening. And whether you believe in it or you don't, healing is happening. <laughs> um, my teacher says, if you believe in it, it works. If you don't believe in it, it still works. If you believe in it, it works better. <laughs> so it's just a matter of investing in the time and practice. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's good, better, best. The practice of Qigong and the practice of being still and yeah. open allows miracles to happen, little ones and big ones. I love that. And, yeah. you know, because you know I work with essential oils, too, and we use them on, uh, you know, people as well as, as animals. And I mm. understand that Qigong too, you practice that and you work with animals? Oh, with absolutely. When I, when I come into homes, and I, I work with a lot of people in their homes and hospitals. I work um, with children at Crescent Cove Respite and Hospice Home mm. in Minnesota and um, help people to be more comfortable, palliative care, stress and pain reduction. Um, and when I'm in, in people's homes, the animals, they're kind of rushed to me and want me to work on them first. They can feel it. Children oh. and animals are so receptive and so, um, you know, excited to receive almost all the time. And um, they don't tell you it feels better when it doesn't. They don't want to make me feel better, right? They are clear when they feel better. Whereas adults might go, oh, I feel a little better when they don't, or I feel a lot better just to make me feel better when they only feel a little better when they first start practicing. Children and animals do not mess around. They're honest. You have uh, truth on your necklace. <laughs> they have truth in their DNA. Oh. Right? Well, and that's, it works the work. same when, with the oils. It seems like the kids are so receptive and come up to and the animals, too. Yes. You know, we've even had people where, you know, they put lavender on their... Um, ankles and their pets lick it off, you know, <laughs> they get it, right? They so, do, yeah. Oh, that's so funny that they come rushing up to you. I yeah. really love that. And so another great thing that I love that you do, this chi sage, um, as you call it. Yes. And um, when I was over at the healing center, 
that you did, and that's really interesting too. That's um, one of another one of your many modalities that you practice. Sure, qigong can be hands-off healing, you know, simply energy work, you know, and it can be done in person. It can be done by phone. It can be done at a distance when you can't see or hear the person, yeah. and that's the more advanced training. And I've taken all the levels of training in Spring Forest qigong, and I teach in the tradition of Spring Forest qigong, and I, I lace in all of the concepts that I've learned and the things that I've studied and just aim for positivity, truth, honesty. Yes, it hurts right mm -hmm. now, or yes, it's been hurting for five years, but also this hopefulness that I'm making a difference, not, not only me, I'm a midwife to healing, right? right. It's always self-healing. So whether it's a dog or a child or a friend or a relative or a client, who might be a friend or relative <laughs> as well. Like it, it's Qigong promotes self-healing. And that's really, really important. It's not about my magic or my energy or even my training. Mm. The biggest part of my training is to get out of the way, mm. to create a vibration, an environment where healing can best, most effectively happen. So it's just, it's kind of wonderful. I completely forgot your question. <laughs> no, you answered it. Oh, good. <laughs> totally on the chisage. Oh, you know, chisage. Pure, weird. Hands, hands free, energy work. Chisage is acupressure and qigong. So that's hands on healing. Okay. 35 points from head to toe, really gentle acupressure and conveying light and energy into the body. And I don't mean a flashlight, I mean the visualization of light mm. into the body. So you feel relaxed and ready, as if you've had a massage, right. but you don't have to disrobe, you don't have to lie on a table. Um, it's just helpful to take your shoes off, but it can be done anywhere. I've done it in hospital waiting rooms. I've done it at public parks, you know, in the studio, at home. Chisage is wonderful. I love it. And those are the kind of things that we need because a lot of people, you know, airplanes or wherever, people are stressed out in certain situations if they're getting ready to talk or speak or something. So yeah. I love that you can just kind of incorporate that and do it anywhere. And you feel like anybody could get that. You know, I know you teach classes and have... Right. Um, I teach classes every Monday at Holistic Gateway, the studio that you were talking about in northeast Minneapolis from 1030 to noon. So it's a really manageable bite. It's not an eight-hour class to learn some basics and to understand some concepts that go with learning and practicing Qigong. Um, uh, and you mentioned airplanes. I was on a flight from Dublin to Chicago and I was doing a little Qigong to prevent, you know, stiffness and swelling. And one of the flight attendants grabbed me and dragged me into the galley. <laughs> and she said, show us. Because oh. I told her I, I'm trying to avoid swelling. Well, they do all those takeoffs and landings, yes. which causes edema. And so I was teaching Qigong to seven flight attendants in the galley on the airplane. And one of them, you could just tell he was so skeptical. He was like, like <laughs> I can't believe she dragged me into this. But then he started feeling the energy and his eyes got big and he just settled in. And so I hope there's seven people that will suffer oh. less because I was playing with energy to help myself. That yeah. just makes me so happy, like the, and that's why I love this show, is just telling people the simple things that you can do and the ways that you can do to live more naturally and feel at ease. And, you know, I know you have, do a lot of different modalities, too, cranial sacral, you know, quite, a, and how do you, do you incorporate that all in with the Qigong with people, or is it just so depending? In addition to teaching Qigong and using Qigong to help others, I use my foundation of knowledge in many different practices to help me, and I kind of like think of it as almost a menu of what resources I might offer someone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ho'oponopono, for instance, is a forgiveness practice. I worked with a man in Canada when I was teaching up there mm -hmm. um, in Saskatchewan, and he was a physical, beautiful being, physically. And the only blockage he had was anger was anger and unforgiveness. So, mm -hmm. of course, I did chisage for him, and we had a lovely conversation. But his only homework, so to speak, for healing was to practice forgiveness 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Just 10 minutes, set a timer, you know? And that'll open him up to better relationships and to not holding, you said anger is in the back, right? Yeah. Not holding anger in. Some people hold in what they're afraid to express. So it's not just that they're angry, they don't even want to admit it, right? right? So things can build up, and when we practice forgiveness, you know, the foundation of Spring Forest Qigong is love, kindness, forgiveness, 
and compassion. When we practice that, we can't hurt ourselves and we're not gonna hurt others. And it's wonderful to share that energy with the world, literally the world. Well, and isn't that part of, I think we're all just on this path to be better, the best version of ourselves that we can be. And the more that we can learn to do some of these things or have them done with us or however it works, is sharing a beautiful thing. Because yeah. I know I've certainly evolved um, to be um, better than maybe I was years ago or a different version that I think is is yeah. better. So so it's just it's fun to learn all these practices. So what um, you say, I mean, Qigong is really the main practice that yes. you do. Uh, in retreats and in um, the setting of classes that are not specific Qigong um, focus, I will bring up any number of resources and practices for people. Um, I did an inner healer workshop. Mm -hmm. And with every person that brought up what they were there for, it was like, oh, this will fit that so beautifully. And we'd practice and demonstrate, and everyone would benefit from it. But that might be the piece that they might want to take home and play with and expand on. Um, you said a better version, and um, I can I can happily report that my mother says I'm easier to be with. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing to have to hear that, but, but it's a beautiful nope, I get it's it. a beautiful thing. It so is. it just changes your altitude. I, I don't have a better term for it. It really does. And I know you're a keynote speaker too. So do you like work with companies mostly, or how do you, how does that look? I, I've done corporate training. I've worked with uh, franchises. Um, and uh, done keynote addresses and interactive presentations for stress and, and pain relief with m many organizations, nonprofits, for profit, um, state, you know, just state, so government. And uh, it's, it's a joy to do, whether it's six people or 600 people. I love sharing these tools, and it's, it's a joy to do. And you've been teaching since 2004? 2004, I started volunteering as a teacher. I was certified to teach Spring Forest Qigong in 2008, I believe. Wow. So, and I just, I love sharing the tools. And I know Master Lin, um, you know, that was who I taught under too, and he's wonderful. And yes. so, you know, I can't believe how time goes by so fast when we're talking, like, we're almost uh, getting to the end of our time, and I just wanted to, I want to thank you mm -hmm. so much. And I know we should have more shows because I know there's so much more wisdom that you could impart Ooh, and teaching. Part two. I know, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, people can connect with you. We're going to have all of your information that, you know, if they want to come to your classes mm -hmm. and, and participate. And it's just, it's so, um, to me, it's so natural and so easy to do. Yeah for sure. So, so for people that are curious, they can go onto my website and subscribe to my bi-monthly newsletter. I don't bother people every week, but every other month. Um, or they can come to see the presentation at Spirit United, which is at the Harriet Alexander Nature Center on February 8th. So to just get a, a, a more of a touch of what I'm all about and how to engage. Beautiful. Well, thank you everyone. Uh, for joining us at Holistic Living today. And um, I have a favorite saying, and I want to end the show with that. It's a beautiful thing, and thank you so much. Thank you for it's having me. It's just been amazing. Thank you. Totally enjoyed it.